Hi everyone, welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. And today in Anime Reaction, we watch the fifth episode of The Tales of Zisteria. The Axe! If you want to check out our reaction to the fifth episode of Tales of Zisteria, The Axe, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we would love to understand what the fuck is going on in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. Don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for watching. watching. So, on this episode of Tales of Zisteria, The X. Are you sure watching the same anime? No. Actually, <laughs> really not. They um, they took a break from the cliffhanger that they left us on. The cliffhanger. The hell of a cliffhanger. Yeah. Anyway, so they show us a story about a character named Velvet Crow. Banff who and is Total Hottie. trapped in a prison where she's forced to destroy what they call daemons on a daily basis. Welcome to Thunderdome, bitch. Yeah. The, the, the weird thing about it is it, clearly she was just the garbage disposal of that prison because it's not like they were using it as like a sport or anything. Yeah, just nobody was watching. They just dropped the they just dropped the demons down there and let her do her work. It's just like the empty executioner or garbage disposal. Yeah. Uh, putting it harshly, but... Anyway, so uh, we see her kill a couple of werewolves and no. then be strong and then the door hatch thingy opens up and down drops a character named Saris who not to be confused with Saris Victoria yeah no this is uh <laughs> no, no. Sar Saris Malik or Malik, she, Malik she certainly Saris. is she certainly is badass though yeah she's a magic user a pretty advanced one. Yeah, uh, she has a lot of different magic, which is cool, I guess. Hmm. But she breaks her, she breaks Velvet out of prison, and then the rest of the episode we're pretty much treated with your standard prison break story. Um, mm -hmm. At first, you know, they break out, they have to fight a bunch of exorcists who are the guards there. Or yeah, then sneak past a few more. And then, well, after they fight a bunch, they end up going mm -hmm. and hiding in a storeroom where oh, yeah. I assume that they're storing prisoners' personal effects. Yeah, so Velvet because gets Because they just her so happen to go yeah, straight into the room where Velvet was able to get all of her clothes. And her uh, totally not from Assassin's Creed hidden blade. I've got to say, like, the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the end of the recap to talk yeah. about it. Um, while they're in there, uh, a, another prisoner shows up. <laughs> well, yeah, he walks Rokuro. in. Rokuro, yeah. And there are two ladies. He walks in because he's looking for his blade, which Velvet just so happened to have picked up. She probably wanted to pawn it or something. Probably. I would. Yeah, but yeah, the ladies go into hiding, thinking that uh, they're going to get the drop on him. He shuts the door. They come out. <laughs> and boy, <laughs> were badass. they wrong. He totally Batman. Oh, no. He totally homerode him. Yes. That was that was pretty epic. Yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, basically, they reveal that they're also prisoners who are escaping... <laughs> And they agree to work together to escape. <laughs> and basically, their big plan is to start a prison riot. Now escape in the Let's chaos. Start a riot. Start. Come on, guys, riot! <laughs> Sorry, I had to make that reference again just to be clear. <laughs> I made that reference during the episode too. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean it works pretty much to perfection. Most of the exorcists are. Uh, being actually destroyed by the by the prisoners. Ouch. This really reminds Which are all demons, by the way. Yeah. This uh this little episode here really reminded me of the uh the, the prison escape from uh Legend of Dragoon. Yeah the, with uh Helena Prison. Yes. Escape from Helena Prison. Where you uh, you you have to avoid certain one or you have you're supposed to avoid all the guards. I just used them to power level. 
so so <laughs> Feed me more. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Pretty Another much. Another one by dust. Do, 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 do. Another one by dust. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so Velvet and Ceres escape to the top of the prison, uh, which is a really, really tall tower. What are you doing going to the top? Yeah, that seems like the last place that you want to go, especially since Velvet, it said, was being held in the lowest level. Oh, what, what was... were you doing going to the top floor? Were you planning to jump the entire time? What the fuck? I mean, technically jumping probably would be the easiest way to get out. But from that height... If you're going to go through the front door, it's probably going to be pretty much impossible. But still. Good lord. And then also, uh, to add on to this little uh, detail, she totally put down a rope when they were in that little uh, storage room. <laughs> Not that that rope would have helped them. That was a rather long way, but... Yeah, still, but I'd rather fall 150 feet than 200. <laughs> Yeah, if, I, I suppose. Oh, well, I'd rather not fall any feet, but if I were forced to, I guess. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it appears that they're cornered. It appears that they're cornered. Not really. I never believed that they were cornered. I don't think anybody really did. No. But Velvet decides to uh, turn on her Kumbaru arm power <laughs> and jump using her arm to gri uh, stab into the side of the prison. Okay, well, you did mention it. I didn't have a problem with that, with her using her power that way. Magic claw. Is... What I had a problem with, which is probably what you're about to mention, mm -hmm. is that she went down head first. No. No, 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 no! Upside down, kind of like, eh. You, there, yeah, there, no. No, there, there, there's something called gravity that that works here, and uh, doing this is just fine. You know, it, as it, long as you have a gigantic demon claw thing. Well, even if she was going down head first, the moment that she put her gigantic demon claw into the side, it would have pulled her back upright. Yeah, because her, her arm is up here. It would rather than in the middle or lower on the body, so all the weight would be would three. go down. Yeah. It would basically attach attach you to something via your hand. Your hand becomes a fulcrum. The rest of your body is the rest of the pendulum. But no, they they actually had her falling down, upside down, like because this is this is posable. <laughs> Literally had her falling down like this. <laughs> the moment that she put that arm into the side. It would have gone, <laughs> yeah, like that. that, that that's how it should have been. <laughs> Physics lessons with waifu and my hairy arm. That poor waifu. To be fair. It's that, Asuka. It's mine. And Asuka suffered worse. <laughs> yes, she has. <laughs> oh, uh, hallelujah! <laughs> anyway, so Velvet falls down and dislocates her shoulder. Ouch. She damn well fucking deserved that going down the way that she did. She's lucky that's all Dumb that bitch. happened. I'm I'm surprised that that's all she suffered. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, honestly, she should have cracked her head open. Like she yeah. should have cracked her skull open. She should have done like the full Jackie Chan and break all 200 plus bones in her body. But you know, cool, cool. I'm much, much more appreciative that they use something like a hand. Obviously, it's like you know, indestructible or whatever. Magic. Better than a sword or a blade or any other kind of instrument. That would just. That would snap, or bend, and or become useless. Mainly become useless. Get ripped out of your hand. Mm -hmm. And even if it was attached to your hand, it the the. But let's say like. It's attached by this paracord, right? As soon as that thing gets like hit into the wall, if it actually gets stuck there, your hand's gone. Like, yeah, like say pop, goodbye to your hand. Mode. 
Because they were like that. Yeah. From from that height, you're talking about like uh, uh, terminal velocity, really. You're, yeah, you're talking about terminal velocity, and you're talking about uh, attempting to make all of that velocity stop within a matter of inches. Yeah, but on the bright side, you'll be one step closer to your secret dreams of becoming a pirate or having a really sweet rocket fist. Actually, be honest, it might not even be your hand that comes off. It could be at the elbow or at the shoulder. Woo, Mega Man. The point <laughs> is, it's not going to be pleasant. No, it isn't. So uh, that's one trope that really pisses me off. Like, if you go back and watch uh, one of the episodes of ReZero, Subaru attempts it. Hmm. He actually breaks the blade, which is awesome. I'm yeah. glad that they put that in. But it still doesn't make any sense because, mm -hmm. again, he would have snapped his arm off. And if it didn't come off, at the very least, it would have been dislocated. And I, I can't tell you, I, I can't tell you how hard it is to keep a blade parallel as you're dragging it through something. Yeah. Like it, they did. You better. Anyway, have a damn the good point is, it's a good it's thing that, that they, that they did it that way. Yeah, but it's more believable. So Saris, being gifted with magic and much smarter, <laughs> it's just teleports. <laughs> so I have a question here. Why couldn't Saris be like, "Come on, poof"? Right. Maybe it's different kinds of magic. Maybe hers is more of a holy magic, whereas uh, Damon magic, uh, maybe they don't mix or something. Uh, but it shouldn't, like... Actually, no, never mind. If that were the case, she wouldn't be able to heal her like she did after the fall. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, what the hell? What the hell, Actually, Saris? It, maybe Saris was about to do it, and then Velvet ran, out, ran off and jumped. She just went full Leroy? Yeah, like, oh my god, damn it, Velvet. <laughs> Well, she did that's, have that that's, that's look what for I a sec, think. actually. Mm. I, I think that that Saris was right about to turn around and go, okay, let's teleport down. Uh, and then and then she turns around to see Velvet jumping off. This dumb bitch. <laughs> anyway, that's where the episode leaves us. Is uh, There is a ship of, I assume, more powerful exorcists approaching. Whom Velvet hates. I'll be yeah, and uh, actually you get Sarah saying that on board that ship would be uh, this apparently this Octorius I believe is the guy's name seems to be the target of some revenge that uh, Violet Crow wants to carry out. So hmm, boss beating. It was a good episode. It Great was just episode. really confusing because I was expecting a continuation of Sori and Company, mm -hmm. and what we got was. As far as I can tell, a completely unrelated group so far. So, uh, you say you want a resolution, huh? By the way, his name is not spelled R-E-Z-O. It's R-I-Z-Z-O. Rizzo. Riz, not Rez. Riz. I know I'm really shit at pronouncing things, but <laughs> not to be confused with uh, Team Resolute or anything like that. Uh, yeah, no. I see. This is why I went with a simple uh, nickname slash, I guess, gamer tag. Anyway, uh, Bef yeah. Before we actually get into that, <laughs> before we actually <laughs> probably be for one of our specials or something. Yeah. Mm. Before we actually get off of here, I want to I want to say that. This was probably the prettiest episode that I've I've seen so far, other than other than like the first like episode zero was mind. was a spectacular. That yeah. was just <gasps> yeah. Honestly, this was probably probably the best animated other than episode zero out of the series so far. But so far, like Ufotable, oh god, Ufotable. They are like they brought their A game on this one. On top of this, like when we do our postseason podcast and we do the superlatives list, this one is like hands down maybe the top three spots of best animation. 
I, I probably just. I think like, it's the best animated. Hands down. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm calling it now. Uh, there isn't one that's that's really close. If, I mean, if it ever, is, we haven't watched a whole lot of episodes of it this season, but Kuro Makuro has some pretty outstanding animation too. But this is Ufotable, a studio known for stellar, stellar animation, bringing their A game. Yeah. I mean, just absolutely, well, it's a it's a visual treat to watch. Like, uh, so right at the beginning when you see Velvet Crow uh, crumpled to the ground and she's sitting there, I, I don't know if she's crying or she's in pain or something like that, and then you see this like blue magic or whatever starting circling her, the, the magic that was shown there, you could see it. It was... It looks like actual blue fire. Okay. Just look into your eye really, 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 really deeply. Because the. <laughs> Get the, like that close to it. Yeah. See the details of like the iris? Yeah. That is what I saw there. Mm. And I got to tell you, like, if you see if you see an iris or if you see the, uh, yeah, the iris really, really close up, go ahead. Look at pictures it's of it. It's sort of cloudy and kind of. It is beautiful. It's like a galaxy. It really so is. And like that's what I that's saw it. in that scene. Ah. In that specific scene. And then the distortion of the magic when it's being used, like the the or, arm yeah, distortion. Yeah, yeah, the uh, malevolence. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind when, of radiating. Yeah, when, yeah, when it shows it up close and you see just the shimmering, kind of like a mirage. Well, yeah, or a uh, heat radiation. Yeah, heat radiation. Yeah. Coming or, off of the, the her arm. Or actually, unrelated to the episode, but in the opening they uh, debuted, because I think that was a new song, um, where you see Sori standing on the crag. Just everything around him looks it, like a photo. Yeah, it looks it's like a pretty. picture, but you can just, just barely, barely tell. tell that it's not. But just, oh. So, so I mean, yeah. Damn it, it photobol. These little details. Oh my goodness. These I, are many more. I, I think that... You know, watching this episode, animation, 12 out of 10. Like, yeah. fucking brilliant, Brilliant. And I am in love with the characters. I'm in love with the character design. I'm not, like, totally enthralled with, uh, with the way that they act, sort of. Okay, let's just say, we'll just say, I uh, agree, Velvet's a hottie. <sighs> <laughs> oh, damn. I, I want a velvet white I want a velvet waifu for the set for the set we, we need one <laughs> to be honest I kind of want a, whole, a full set velvet Alicia Saris I, I actually oh, I actually wouldn't mind. some of those other female characters that they were showing in the opening mm -hmm. I wouldn't Can't mind getting them. like the uh, the the shepherd version of Sori. That'd be cool. Because he looks badass. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, mind getting back to the shepherd version of Sori. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it looks like next ep uh, next week's episode, we're still focused on our uh, new group here and their escape from Azkaban. So, guys in the comments, hmm. um, I said I said it earlier. Where are we? <laughs> what what are we doing here? What is real life? But I'm serious, like, this is literally jarring. I like it a little bit, but I, I do want to understand what's going on here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because... And this is based on off, off a series of uh, RPGs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. the, the Tales of series is massive. Well, all right, yeah, J, uh, JRPGs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been deep, going on I think, since, like... The Super Famicom days. Holy shit, really? Yeah, and so it's just a massive group of games. <sighs> yeah. Like, it, it's straight up uh, Rivals Final Fantasy. Well, that's that's and, all you need to know about how deep this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> and uh, while we do know what's going on, like, where are we at in the world? What, you know, is this something completely different? Are we getting into a tie in to the old storyline try to stick steer clear spoilers for the rest of the series 
You know what the fortunate thing about this anime is? Mm -hmm. The game hasn't come out yet. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So, there's not a... Or, I think... It might have just come out. It's like really close. Cause I know, like, and then there's another one that that hasn't come out yet. That's coming out like next year or later this year. Cause I know, uh, I know, uh, Fancilion uh, has played the, the Tales of series. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly I think maybe much... Tales of Hysteria has come out. Maybe there's another one coming out. Hmm. Uh, I know it's like a very very recent release though. Okay. Like it, it's like the most recent release if it has come out. Yeah. So they're, uh, well, that's why they're making the anime that coincide with it then? Yeah, probably. Buy all our playsets and toys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Totally, Velvet Crow. Wow. Anyway, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And if you don't like Velvet Crow, what the hell's wrong with you? That's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Zero. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you next time. time.